All right, my lovers, Manny here. Really, really sorry I couldn't make it for this episode, but I'm a bit ill. Rob's told me that I'm an idiot for missing it, as this film, Callus, was fucking sick. So enjoy the episode and watch the film. That's a Manny guarantee that you'll love it. Uh, I have not... S- just go and watch it and enjoy the episode. Love you guys. Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Watch Horror Podcast. This is a point five production and it's episode 10.5. You're here with me, Rob, and Ruby this time. Yay! Unfortunately, no Manny. <laughs> um, he's feeling a bit unwell today, so he's not going to be involved in this. Yeah, we're doing really well. Yeah. <laughs> with the, um, us all being here, I think. See, now I was going to make a really long-winded joke about how I'm going to be taking attendance and there's going to be repercussions <laughs> and I'm becoming mad with power and it's going to be hilarious. But after what we just watched, I cannot string my thoughts together enough to, to deal with that yeah, at, right now. You. Um don't we just you. we just watched Callus from 2018 by Prismal Entertainment and you have never seen anything quite like this. I certainly haven't. No, I mean That's for sure. maybe Lozman has seen something like this, one of our Twitter <laughs> friends, but I honestly did not expect that. It was the one of the biggest mind fucks I have ever been witness to and I haven't got over it just yet. I've had a wee <laughs> since then. I've had, you know, a little drink. I've had a little walk around the house. And, and I, don't feel, I don't feel okay. I genuinely do feel quite disconnected from reality right now. <laughs> from myself, who I am, who you are, what's going on. <laughs> I mean, all I can say is I'm quite happy that Manny wasn't here because he would have not been able to contain himself with that. You know, Manny has, like, he's, he's, he's seen a lot. And he and he, he he would have watched it, but there were bits in this film which would have messed him up. Mm-hmm. There were bits that, particularly to his what he doesn't like and what gets him, you know, what scares him. There was there was plenty of that in here. Yeah, I think he may have fully shat. Yeah, <laughs> I've been witness to that. This is something. Like, so, just to jump into it really quickly, there's a guy called Wrinkly Rick or something in this. Mm. Wrinkly Rick, and you mentioned shit himself. Now this guy, this this is part of the film. He made me want to shit myself, and I was thinking, how what would I do to defend myself from Wrinkly Rick? And I think I wouldn't have been I, if 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 I ever see Wrinkly Rick, I would shit myself. So are you I, assuming Wrinkly Rick is the guy we see? I don't know. I didn't. Make I don't that know. Okay. I just know that Wrinkly Rick is somewhere, and. It's at the very end of the film, so I know I'm jumping ahead, but I just need to talk about it because it's the last thing I saw and I'm not feeling all right. <laughs> I, my only defence would be to throw my shit at him that I just <laughs> shat out from how scared he made me. My second defence would be to eat that shit in a hope that he would be so weirded out by me he may leave me alone. <laughs> I think that's all you can do in these situations is try and be even weirder than what you are actually in front of. And this film keeps getting weirder. Mm. It starts off like quite... Normal, you get you get a lady that wakes up in her bed and she's got this phone call about a birthday or something or other. It's very hard to kind of keep my thoughts to the normal <laughs> at the moment. Well, it opens, it's a voicemail, isn't it? It opens up with a still shot of a, a lady walking around in the background listening to a voicemail from her mother yes. and brother. Um, and as you say, it all sounds quite normal. They're talking about a birthday and about picking up a birthday cake and all that kind of thing. So it's all very like, okay pretty humdrum um and then it just very quickly just escalates i guess get the i mean even it's gonna be really hard to find the right words here i think we're trying to do a podcast and one thing i think this film does is makes you quite incapable of normal speech (laughs) and thought so this will be an interesting one we're gonna do our best yeah both of us are sitting here with our hands our heads in our hands, just what the fuck, man? (laughs) 
Like, and that's a good what the fuck. I mean, yeah. I think that's yes. number one. If you go, if you watch this film, which I really hope you do, it's going to be coming out in early 2019. They're not quite sure how it's going to be coming out there. I think they're aiming for Prime and they're hoping to get Prime. If not, they'll probably put it out on YouTube. So early this year. Yeah, from right. Prismal Entertainment. If you watch this, number one thing. Go into it with an open mind, okay? So go into it with yes. not with all of your usual like horror watching things like that and all your expectations and everything like that. Go into it completely expecting to just don't don't expect anything. Yeah, I've le- that was literally one of my main notes was this needs an open mind. It requires an open mind going into this. Don't have any expectations, and when you're watching it, try not to think about it too much. I guess. It will force you to think about it, though. This this yeah. this film, I think that's the one thing, the word callous, it wants to fuck with you. The film, it, to me, it almost felt like the film was like this energy that was just trying to get into my brain uh-huh. any way it could and hurt me. And it did. Like, mentally, I, I'm tired. Physically, I feel a bit sick, <laughs> you know, and I, I don't know whether that's the POV points because there, there were a lot, if, you, if you're not yeah. into the POV and there's a lot, it feels like it's a game. It feels like you're watching someone play a kind of first person game at points. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly struggling. I really am. It just, there's so much and so few words that seem adequate enough to encompass it. Like, I get, yeah, going with this game thing, there's a lot of POV stuff. Um, I wrote down that it really felt like Slender Man at points, the game. Mm. The, the PC game. Especially at the, the start one. of the first dream sequence we get. Yeah, when uh, it's in the forest, right? Yeah. Um, and you, you've really got that creeping sensation that every move of the camera, which is like the move of her head, you're going to see something suddenly. Um, mm. And it really builds it and builds it and builds it. Like, this film is an hour long. Yeah, 63 minutes officially. 63 minutes. And the the pacing of it is insane. Like I said to Rob quite near the end, I was like, you could tell me this has been on for 10 minutes or it's been on for three hours and I could believe you equally on both. Yeah. Like I had, I lost all sense of reality. I really did. This sounds like a real hyperbole, but it's not. Like it really fucks with you. Mm. It really does. And they say, yeah, it does feel like gameplay. It really feels like they were heavily influenced by some of the games we've played that are like essentially walking simulators but yeah, with horror thrown in. Well, this is something I was just thinking: is that this film could go down as one of those like it, 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 it if you, depending on how you go into it, and depending on what kind of mood you're in when you watch it, and possibly what kind of person you are, you're either going to discover so much about this and realize how many different points the uh, the director whose name is Ahmed, the director had like so many cool, interesting, weird ideas to mess with you and to kind of get you to understand what this what the person in the film's going through. And you can either see that as a way of like, wow, this is this could be a cult classic. Mm. Or you could see it as you just you won't be able to understand it or you won't want to understand yeah. it. You have to really try with this. Otherwise it will lead you to this murky painful place of just like terror almost it's yeah like you say i think this will divide people definitely i don't think this is going to be like oh yeah everyone will love this i think you have to you have to kind of get what they're trying to do you have to get it and i i mean i wouldn't say i get it as in terms of like i can explain this but that's why I feel like I get it. I, mean, mm. I'm, I'm, I am butchering this and I apologise. I'm trying to desperately put this eloquently. I mean, I guess it did its job by doing this to me. <laughs> it, it, was, it was mesmerizing. Yeah. You know, you watch it. Um, shall I read, shall I give you the kind of back of the box preview thing that we've yeah. got going? Sure. So we were contacted by Ahmed Amin and um, he is from Pr- Prismal Entertainment, the entertainment company that made this. It's their very first film. And I think most people involved is their very first foray into horror films and films in general, which if, you know, that's the case, then what the fuck is going through your mind, guys? Like, for this to be your first one, like, dudes, you... Um, and <laughs> I mean, I don't want to accuse anyone of anything, but you must have taken some serious acid in your time. Yeah, or, or you've had some interesting drink. I mean, like... It does feel like an acid trip. Yeah, and I think Ahmed, I mean, he, he, and he wrote the film... I'm going to read this from the IMDb page. 
Callus is a psychological horror movie that takes place inside the head of a girl in a coma who keeps having one nightmare after another which results in her death every time. But with every nightmare she gets to understand what is happening, why it is happening, and if she was in a coma by accident or was it planned from the beginning. The movie, oh, there's a little bit extra on here, the movie is 63 minutes long, an original story written and directed by Iraqi author A.H. Amin, and filmed with cast and crew from all over the world, including America, China, Russia, Mauritius, Somalia, and of course Iraq. So from that, a lot of different thoughts have gone into this, obviously. Hmm. That is the story that we're in. We're in Basically, we're inside a girl's head who's in yeah. a coma. I'm really glad, actually, that you've said you read that out because I said at some point during the film, like, is she dying at the end of each sort of sequence? It felt like, mm. again, going back to this, gameplay thing it genuinely feels like when you're playing a game and you die and then you regenerate um at the start of the level or on your last save point or checkpoint or whatever and that's how it felt but it it's it doesn't spoon feed that to you you kind of have to work that out for yourself and i'm glad that you confirmed my theory i guess that Mm. that kind of is what's happening is she's attempting to get through these levels or sequences that are getting crazier and crazier But it's not always a forward progression. Sometimes you go back, sometimes you go a bit back. So it is like that when whenever her last arbitrary checkpoint was. Yeah. And I think you you find that each each kind of level has its own kind of monster. Every monster you'd see it and I did not want to see it again. Oh god. Like the the the, the first one that really throws you is um (laughs) so she goes to this kind of place, it's like a kind of it's called like Heaven's Bake this kind of place where we see her with her friends. Yeah, Yeah. for heaven's bake. And then she leaves and it looks like there's a crime where this guy's murdered someone and then attacked her. And she wakes up in this hospital. And you kind of, this is at the point where it's like, okay, where's this, where's this film going? I don't know its intentions here. And it gets a bit trippy, a bit green screen. I mean, oh, the budget of this was like $2,500. What? Yeah, and you can definitely tell that he used every single Sent I mean, that's penny of still that. incredible. Yeah, so the, he's had to he's had to do a lot of work, you know, in post and a bit bit green screen and stuff. But I implore you to look past all of that. Well, what? Well, yeah, one look past it at certain points, but in other points, like it does it such a massive favor because it adds to that oddness. You know, it's it's used in such a way that actually just makes it even weirder in the in the best possible way. Mm. And um, so the bit when I kind of realised that, okay, we're in for something weird here, is she's in this um, hospital, everything's going all right. She looks down a corridor and we see this fucking thing. <laughs> and both of us went, fuck, what? Like, yeah, n- uh, and then we're thrown outside into this forest kind of dream straight away. But that bit, when, I, when we saw that, I was like, okay, this doesn't normally happen to me and you. I was, at that point, I was scared of this film. I was looking away. I was hugging the hugging the corner of the sofa. I was, ha- I was puffing on my vape kind like a crazy. fucking train. It happened to, like, both of us as well. That was weird. Yeah. I mean, it was... I mean, I feel like I can say this. It's the reason we said Manny would find this so horrific, I think, and I reckon, and I put money on, is because it involves distortion, um, like facial distortion and body distortion, and that's like his thing. I think we've mentioned it a couple of times, like that's his horror kink. Mm. <laughs> that's what gets him really freaked out. So I think he genuinely would have screamed the house down. He would have done. <laughs> I may have had a, some sort of breakdown. Well, would you um, remember what he was like in a Until Dawn with the, that game with the contorted person? And you were freaking out about that as well. Oh my god, yeah. We bought we bought a VR for the PlayStation, and the first game we bought was a horror game, which is that Until Dawn, like kind of like on a track thing. You have What's these two called? guns, uh, Rush of Blood. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And yeah, if you like that kind of stuff, give it a go. It's fun. And um, this is really similar to that, actually, especially with the PO induced nausea and <laughs> sort of adding to the freakiness of it. Yeah. Yeah, you you didn't you didn't react well to being attacked by contorted, odd things. I mean, at least you had guns with yeah. that that you could shoot them. On this film, you're kind of you. It made me feel very helpless as well <laughs> because when when our main characters wandering around and looking at everything and trying to, you just. You, you want us almost, because it looks like a game, you want to pick up the controller yeah. and steer it away from stuff. Yeah. And you can't. And I think that 
when when you go out of the POV phases of this film and you go back to watching her, it's such a relief to just be able to relax and watch her because when, when you're going through the POV bits as her and there's a really cool bit where you see the back of her head and you the camera kind of goes into her head mm. and you know that it's coming and I remember I, I was going like, no, 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 I'm not ready. Yeah. You go into the back of your head, you go into this POV segment, it's tense and scary and a bit nauseating when you when it stops and you kind of like the levels almost finished and we get to watch her because if she pretty much finishes every level without us in you know in her head so that we can watch her deal with whatever monster she's being involved with at that moment and running away from or being attacked by i almost felt a relief that it's like right i can let she can have the reins for a little while mm. and she can deal with this and i can just watch like her because like yeah because i can't quite take it anymore yeah i it's really difficult to know how, I mean, how much clarity we're bringing to this. I don't know <laughs> if we are really. Like, I don't, obviously it's a point five. We don't want to go through this like plot point by plot point. And we definitely don't want to give any way, away any like major spoilers or even minor spoilers, to be honest. I think mm-hmm. the less you know about this, the better. Yeah, I we don't want to give, blind. yeah, I, I mean, don't want to give anyone plot point by plot point no, on this one. I mean, did you see a trailer or anything for this I, I saw nothing no. about this. All I've got, all I had is the uh, the poster, which we'll go through in a minute, mm-hmm. and this, the email from Ar- Ahmed himself. Mm-hmm. Um, another little bit. The movie was a challenger, mate, and they had, they had the time and they had a budget. And they, the only way they could do this, because they were people from all of these countries and shot it in all these different locations, is they had to do it like once a week for a period of a year. Wow. So it took a long time to make. And that, I think in a way, that like that really lent itself to having all these different sequences because it really did feel like you that you were in a completely different place a lot of the time and, and a time. lot yeah and and even like you know the way that the camera was being worked and the way that the acting was being done it was definitely felt like there was something different and obviously the fact that it took this long to make and they only you know they had to meet up at certain points throughout the year it kind of almost captured that that yeah. sense of like you know them they're all going to have different moves they're going to have different things going on with their life throughout the year and it's portrayed really well in this film yeah it almost did feel like just as much was going on off camera as was going on on camera and there's a lot going on on camera you know on screen oh there, yeah there is there's, there's so much, so going, much on going on the entire time from start to finish but it, i know what you mean there's all this other like sort of more subtle stuff going on that you just i feel like you pick up on mm. um like yeah with the different locations and different times like for me the ever so slightly broken english was really interesting yes um you know there's like a bit with a newscaster that you sometimes hear just the audio of and then at one point you actually get to see a visual of it as well and it's this really strange not even quite broken english but just like it's not the first language yes. obviously of yeah. the person so it's just spoken in a very sort of different way um and i didn't know if it had if the film had been dubbed or or what i didn't know what the situation was but it was all good because it just at all added to that really dreamlike quality of the whole thing where things are just a little bit off and you can't quite put your finger on what it is but it's just off yeah that that that's the thing i think whenever i whenever i get scared the most or whenever i get something weirded out is when it's that uncanny valley and something's a little bit off and i think mm, and that's a really good time for this yeah. film well that, and that's why i mean that's why i think it's great knowing the fact that it was shot you know once a week throughout a year is that it's a bit off because they're not going to be filming it the same way you know when they started it they're going to be filming it differently to how they did that later and that's something like very interesting filming at the start very interesting, you know. Like when we when we listen to the tape record, or I mean, to the voicemail, mm. it, it focuses on the on the like we're what we're watching her from like behind the phone. Yeah, she's out of focus. Yeah, and then there's a bit where she's going up some stairs to meet her friends, and you like kind of like it, the camera's left on a on a step, and you she steps over it, yeah. and they kind of like introduce the, uh, the the characters' names and the 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 actors' names in that like above them in all kind of like weird places. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the, the our lead's name. Can did you write that down? It was uh, Gail Ju. Okay, yeah, and she she was great, you know, because she she didn't have she too fantastic. yeah she didn't have too much we didn't really have anyone to talk to in this film <laughs> no apart from herself yeah mostly and a lot of the narration in this film is done like so because she's in a coma you can hear what the doctors are saying Sometimes. during the sequences and that and their voices are all distorted but in a really great way it's not just the same same voices over again it kind of like becomes distorted and not distorted and then it's i think the director here has cleverly done all of this just to keep you 
unsure about what's mm-hmm. going on as as a, as a audience. I'd, I'd love to know how it's been doing at the fest film festivals because it's been doing the festival circuit. Um, and it's just re- it actually just won the best feature at the Falcon International Film Festival in London. So that it just shows how you know good this film is and how yeah. like you can't th- ignore this. Like if you see this, you cannot ignore it. And no. I don't think I'll be forgetting it probably ever. <laughs> no, there, there is going to be discussions about this film when it when it comes out and when yeah. the general audience can watch it because you know like, I. I it's it's weird. Like I want to tell Manny about it, but I'm gonna have to sit him down and make him watch it oh, before so because definitely. I I will I I would almost feel like I'd have to let him kick me in the teeth if I ruin this for him, and I want to watch him like deal with some of the stuff he's gonna be seeing Let's, on screen. Yeah, as when well. we watch it with him, I'm just gonna be turning my chair towards him. I just want to see his reaction. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, um, yeah. Like you say, there's right from the very beginning, even before we go into like, I called it a dream sequence, but I guess more accurately, you call it a coma sequence, which is the vast majority of the film. But before we even delve into that, like, uh, yeah, some really just intriguing, fresh camera angles. Like, like you say, every sort of little mini scene was filmed completely differently. And it really just like, just grabs you by the eyeballs and pulls you in. And that just continues with the camera angles and just a lot of the visuals in this are mm. just bizarre and different and completely... Oh, you see some fucking crazy shit. I mean, the bit yeah. in the woods where, like, there's a tree that's got, like, eyes and then it's not eyes, it's actually a person, but the person is, like, sometimes, like, obviously superimposed, which I don't know if it's because of the budget or not or just because it to fuck with you. And then at some point we're looking at a tree and then just eyes and a mouth pop onto the screen and like laugh <laughs> at you, which at this point I'm shitting myself and also like wanting to like scream like, what is this and why is this happening? And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, we're in water and we I feel like we're drowning because I don't know if we are drowning or not. And you look mm. up and some shit happens. And like the way I'm talking at, like this in such like a excited and manic way is how you'll feel because I could, I could do the whole film like this, you know, from that we go into like a corridor and she's <laughs> shit in the, and I got to learn how to say corridor. Um, and then shit comes at you. This guy's got eyes that are like the size of like fucking saucers staring at you and you don't know whether they're eyes or not there's a dude with like i thought it was a pig's face but it wasn't it's like a burnt face like i mean i i i am hurting (laughs) that's all i'm hurting i mean yeah all i can think is like you know i've never done hallucinogenics but i'm almost certain that this is how they feel yeah other people's descriptions of it like this has got to be how that feels. Yeah, I mean... The closest representation, anyway, without actually being intoxicated, because it's just crazy. I mean, I'm trying to think of a way of reviewing this film in a way that it deserves. So I'm going to try, like... Me and you quit smoking about six months ago. Uh-huh. I, I want to... I, I, I need a cigarette, and I also need a cheese sandwich. <laughs> I need a cigarette... Plain. Yeah. No a, mayo. No, no, no. No mayo. <laughs> like, the most plainest of butters... Straight up cheddar grated on and like that on a nice white plate. And, a hot and, cocoa. and yeah, I just want to sit down and have a hot water bottle. And I'd never use hot water bottles. And I want to wear my do my I want to wear a do no a, a fucking what what's the thing you you wear like in the Blanket? no 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 like after a shower or like you Towel? wear no it's you wear it it's a piece of clothing a dressing gown a dressing gown, a dressing gown will not do. I want a fucking duvet. <laughs> And I want this sofa, but I don't want you any on it. I don't want you anywhere near me. I want to be by myself, eating my cheese sandwich, and then possibly another cigarette afterwards. Because, this yeah. This is just what this film does to Yeah. Me. My eyes are sore. Like, Again, my eyes Again, to clarify, feel weird. this is all good things. <laughs> oh, man, I, I cannot... This is us not having any kind of problems with this film whatsoever. Like, it is just... Just so different. Oh, it's great. Like, watch it. Just just watch it. And, and go into it... Like I said before, go into it with a completely open mind, and yeah, prepare. There are bits in it because it's it's their first film. It's low budget. There are bits in it which you could you could be very nitpicky on, but don't just just like as as a favour to yourself. Like just again, let yeah. yourself enjoy it because you will. Yeah, I think if you're doing that again, I just it's not anyone, but like it just if you if you're being that that like nitpicky about it, to me it means you just don't really get it. Mm. You don't really get what they're trying to do because what they're doing is so different and 
there's there, there were there were several moments throughout this where me and rob looked at each other and actually said what the fuck like actual what the fuck scares mm. oh it's, I, I, I was scared a, a few times just things i'd never seen before i've never seen anything like it before you know it's it's i can't even give you a list of films that it makes me think of because apart from some really ridiculous avant-garde shit like mm. but but this doesn't feel of... pretentious though that's no. the thing like it's none of it no. is like oh we're doing this like it just feels like some people that that love horror they got some fresh ideas and they're just like shitting them onto the page yeah. or like in you know maybe maybe in a way that's less offensive than shitting them onto the page <laughs> but they're just like chucking them on there <laughs> you're watching it and uh, yeah i feel like the way this film may also made me feel I mean, I can't, I'm going to, I could go for this for hours about how it made me feel, but I feel like if you're sitting there being nitpicky, this film is going to come out and kick you in the balls mm. for being nitpicky at it, because... Well, yeah, just, like just you thought a, that was bad, try this. Yeah, because in a minute's <laughs> time, when you think that you've worked it out with your nitpicky mind, I'm going to just come in here and just, like, change everything and also change nothing and just mess with you. Yeah... It does that well. I really hope that we're giving a review enough that it doesn't doesn't sound... Because in my mind, I think I'm doing quite well, as in like trying to articulate how this film sounds. But I think we're I, doing as well as we can. Yeah, I just don't want to, when I come to edit this, it just sound like me going, ah, blah, 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 which could, be, all, could be the case. Yeah, but to be fair, would be a good representation of just how this film makes you feel. Yeah. I really don't think there's much more we can do. Like, you know, I got actual goosebumps in this and I don't get that very often so that was like just a fucking joy to be honest like to be made to feel that way so exciting and just yeah <laughs> you're struck I, I see your myself. eyes like going wide with like think of a word but can't because brain is well I've butter. got a few but I just I, I'm trying to decide which one is going to be my word I know my word you do already know word. But do you with, wanna, before we do that do you okay. want to look at the poster I do because it's very pretty I want this as a tattoo gorgeous it would be a good i mean my bicep might be just big enough to fit it on it there's a like the film there's a shit ton going on is that just a casual brag about (laughs) this look you weren't here but man it like we were talking about how heavy we are sitting on the the reason why we had to move from the living um the dining room into the living room to sit on the sofa Mm. is because we we, because of your bulging bicep well because we're so heavy that we're breaking a floorboard (laughs) and i snuck in that i mainly muscle and manny like agreed Oh. Yeah, he didn't like say like no, fuck <laughs> off. Like he, I was like yeah, it's mainly muscle, and he didn't. He let that go. So Hashtag humble, bro. going going with that. That yeah, I'm I'm tonk enough to get this tattoo on me. <laughs> I mean, I think this is gorgeous. I really, really do. I will say, it doesn't particularly feel like the film to me. But having said that, I don't know how the hell you could possibly create a static image to rec- to accurate accurately represent this film. They've done a fucking good job because I mean we're struggling to find several hundred words to describe mm. it, never mind a single static image. I think definitely portrays it in a way that, you know, you get there's a kind of like a skull on on in the middle and you get like these like kind of wavy like what are they what are the lines coming oh, out? The doctor's kind of lines. heart monitor lines. And then all this shit coming out of it and all these like kind of roots coming out of the brain which is kind of what we're dealing with like we're in someone's brain and all of these different directions that it's going with the only thing i don't really get is where it says callus it looks like a moon yeah um i'm not quite sure why the relevance of that but well i guess i mean like you say it's all sort of different stuff branching outwards it's kind of like a kaleidoscope image i guess Mm. you know when you 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 turn a kaleidoscope and you sort of steadily one image transfers into another and at one point they're kind of conjoined Mm. it's kind of got that feeling about it that I guess yeah is like that coma state where the 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 blurred lines between reality and and fantasy or or dream. Yeah, I mean, I think is it the the Crawshank test? The the what's that test where New like people, test. where where you yeah, I'll show you like a thing yeah. and it looks like a vagina and you're supposed to not say vagina. <laughs> Is that your experience of that test? I've never had that test, but <laughs> my chest hair looks like that. Yeah, so you know those tests which we all see in the film where someone's like dealing with like, you know, a mental issue and the person's like, what do you see? And everyone's going to be like, it, 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 it's a vagina, but you can't say that. <laughs> Literally, my chest hair is, is that is that shape. I know, I, I, I have been, I have been uh, yeah. privy to your chest hair, my darling. Yeah, so I'm never, no one's ever going to see that so I could say it looks whatever the fuck I want it to yeah. say, but... 
You can also say you've got massive biceps and no one's going to question you. Well, I, yeah, exactly. You've got <laughs> massive biceps. No, but it is gorgeous. It's got a really nice, like, uh, gothic feel to it. Um, the more you look at it, the more you see, which is always good. And definitely a good representation of this film in, in that sense. I'm really fucking hoping we see this on the cover of a Blu-ray. That'd be cool. That'd be very cool. Ahmed, get this on a Blu-ray, please. And we'll buy one, because I want one. <laughs> Shall we do our words? Let's do it. So I'm going to put another word in Manny's mouth, because we put one in your mouth for the yeah, last one. Yeah, thanks for that. Spangle. Spangle. Um, <laughs> Sounds exactly like me. Crispy is Manny's word. Crispy. Crispy. From a guy who hasn't seen it, I think that's a, that's an all right word to say for and this I get film. the feeling his word would be holy shit, but... Yeah. You know, and he, would, words, he probably would say that in a way that it came out as one word as well. <laughs> uh, my word is going to be trippy. Yeah. Don't would... need to explain it, yeah. but it... it uh, yeah. I've experienced something <laughs> from this, and it's intense, and it was trippy, and that's my word. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely one of the ones going round and round my head as I was watching it, and when I was thinking of which word to choose, um, that pretty much sums it up. I think, I mean, there's a lot of descriptive words in my head to describe how scary this is. Um, you know, all the sort of things you want and expect out of a horror film, you know, uncomfortable. This made me <laughs> so uncomfortable, physically, mentally, spiritually. <laughs> It really, really, really did. It takes you right out of your comfort zone in so many different ways, out of, you know, what you expect to witness in a horror film or even just in film in general, you know, things you, tropes you expect to see and timings and pacing and all that kind of stuff where it just takes you out of that and goes, nah, (laughs) you're having none of that. Have this instead. I'm so impressed of how you're able to string this together in a way which makes sense to me. I'm struggling. You're doing uh, really I mean, well. It may be only you. <laughs> I completely agree with <laughs> everything you said. For years. And you haven't had to say anything stupid like crispy or like <laughs> or talk about my chest hair to explain this. You're doing really well. <laughs> Cheers, babe. Yeah, another word was sinister. This is sinister as fuck. Like it's just got this real creeping sensation the entire time that something is just going to go horribly horribly wrong i mean things are continuously going horribly wrong but you just feel like it's going to get worse and worse yeah that entire time like right up until that last second real creeping feeling but you know all of that stuff i feel like to a certain extent again you could expect from a lot of horrors so instead for this film i have to go with unique this is just completely unique for me like from anything I've really seen before again you know it did remind me a little bit of like a little bit of like things like a razor head and shit like that which you know are very what's the word I'm looking for trippy (laughs) (laughs) oh you know what I mean when it's um you know my my surrealist surrealist stuff like you know it does remind me of that but in terms of like a lot of the horror that you know you'd, we, we tend to watch and everyone tends to watch this is just completely different it throws all of those rules out the window and it just takes you on this ridiculous journey um i'm glad it was an hour long i, I didn't know that when we first put it on i assumed it was going to be like a lot of we do a lot of shorts obviously for the point mm. fives so i was like oh it's an hour like that's a, a lot longer considering what we normally do but i'm really glad that we got that much out of it you needed that time to build to build that story it was telling yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Because it's like, you talk about building it, but it didn't feel like there was any build to it either. Like, I get what you mean. Like, you build the suspense and you... But it also didn't feel like it needed to be built. Well, yeah, not in like a chronological sense. Yeah. No. But I know what you mean by you needed the time. Yeah. Because you could have had one... You one, Each dream se- sequence could have been its short on its own, right? short, yeah. But string them together. You've got a fully, like... Nightmare. S- circular donutty ring of horror mm-hmm. that that fits i've also got one question mm. now listeners you be be polite about this <laughs> and ruby be people be polite about this i'm glad I manny isn't nothing. here because he's not going to be polite about this but can you give me an actual definition of what callous means because I, I understand can. it but yeah. i could not tell you how i have that with words all the time when you have like a sense of what it means but you couldn't describe the definition yeah um callous means well, you know how you get calluses on your hand, right? Yes. That essentially means like a buildup of hard skin. Yes. There's a reason they're called calluses. It's because to, to be callous is to be like hard, to be like hard and like thick skin, tough skinned and just kind of 
cold. But it's also bad. Like, like obviously, I'm well hard, but you wouldn't call myself callous. <laughs> yeah. No, I would not call you callous. Yes, no. because it's a, it's. I guess it's a way you treat people as much as anything else. It's like being just just completely disregarding other people's feelings and just cold and you know a dickhead. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. I, I like the titles. Well, I like the I like callous. I like the yes. one word titles. Yeah, I yeah, it's probably one of the things we can't go into as much no. because we're not going to ruin things. But there is a part in the film where they say callous, and you know, you're like, oh, he's yeah, he's yeah. Yeah. which was a nice little respite from all the other shit <laughs> they put you through. It was nice to be able to have a little smile on my face. Yeah, no, the the, the title will probably make more sense after you've seen it, but it's it's worth the wait. Yeah, there's a lovely little kind of twisty bit at the end, so they wrap everything up quite nicely. Yeah. Um, it, when it ends, you're glad Just it's Just like you need ended. more mind fuckery in Yeah, <laughs> like when it ends, it feels nice, the ending's good, it's a weird kind of place, 60 minutes, it's kind of like, yeah, like you said with our shorts, we have like up to half an hour, we call it a short, and then like you have like your normal like hour and a half type ones obviously terror tales is two hours 60 minutes is a very odd time but i think that fits really well with the kind of oddness of this film uh and i just i can't wait for you know our listeners and the people and people for people to be able to watch this Mm -hmm. because i think when it comes out i'm going to be paying close attention to the reviews it gets and you know like wherever it comes out i want to know how people feel about this because it it could be big yeah it could be really big to hear what people think and what they see and i would I mean, obviously, you would kind of recommend this for watching any horror films, really. But for this, seriously, listen to me right now. Turn the fucking lights off. Light some candles if you've got them. Like, set the mood. Take the time. Have a bit of foreplay with yourself. (laughs) You know, really get into the zone of I'm about to watch something really fucking scary. Give that to yourself. Gift that to yourself. (laughs) Take the time. Is that that, that a ruby promise? Yeah, because I just, I feel like you have to go in this open-minded and ready to fucking go. (laughs) You know? I just think it'll have a good payoff. Because I can I... picture you like fucking like sitting down, <laughs> like strapping on your body armor <laughs> properly, like, you know, getting yourself ready, getting a nice Alka Seltzer next to you as well. <laughs> um, you know, I'd have my cheese sandwich next time when we watch this. <laughs> but yeah, it does feel like prepare. But you but also you won't know it's like it's like basically me asking you to go on holiday but not telling you where the fuck we're going and being like get yeah. ready because you're gonna need shit yeah i realize i have contradicted myself because i said also have no expectations yeah. but it, what i mean is just just give the film the chance to do what it needs to do to you if you yeah. know what i mean it, and it will do stuff to you i'm realizing this is coming across overtly sexual <laughs> that is not my intention yeah. you know as soon as you start saying foreplay i can see a little <laughs> switch in your mind going you're like i'm gonna fucking roll with this you know i mean i think you've seen that this film has unchained me and i've started talking about flinging shit and then eating it to defend myself it's all gone wrong. so you're unchaining yourself by by Doing foreplaying that. your way into weirdness i just mean just give this t- this this film the time and love it deserves yeah i think that's a good that's a good place to end it yeah give this film time and love it deserves a uh, our words are trippy unique and crispy um <laughs> i really miss manny today by the way i feel like we didn't say enough of that at the beginning he's not here because he's feeling a bit unwell and it sucks and we miss him and i know how hard it is to miss these things i missed two in a row and it sucked yeah i mean I missed you guys i missed this i'm glad you missed us and, and a couple of our listeners i think may have missed you as well Aww. yeah um obviously you guys would have heard the intro to this and i'm pretty sure that like like when you had something to say on the other ones um, the last two. I think Manny will have something to say. You know that. Is... Yeah, thanks for that as well. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Well, if you're going to say those kind of things, then. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you very much for this film, Ahmed, and to everyone at Prismal Entertainment and everyone that was involved in this film. Great job, and I mm-hmm. can't wait to see what you come up with next. Yeah. Um, anyone who's going to be seeing this in the festival circuit, enjoy it, and I'm glad that you got to see it in that kind of environment. Any of our listeners who are thinking about possibly watching something new and interesting in this year, do it. I, I we will we will post the there's, there's a trailer for it, and we'll post that on our. Actually, I think I'll watch the trailer first because I don't want it to give too much away. Mm. Um, but we will make sure that we will do everything we can to get you to this film as best we can on our Twitter and on all our social media. And on our Twitter, it is at Watch Horror Pod, one word. Ruby, what's our Instagram? At Let's Watch Horror Pod. 
Yeah, I that's our so. Instagram. It, that is, that it? is our Instagram, and that's the same as our Facebook. So it's at. Um, Why can't I remember this? Because your your brain's been calloused. Um, it's full of horrible uni stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. How how is the masters going, by the way? Uh. <laughs> okay, that, that, that's that's. Yeah, good. let's watch horror pod. Cool. Gmail, if you want to get in touch with us for your own point five to be, you know, done by us, um, depending on whether or not you think we butchered this one. Um, <laughs> or if you just want a general chat directly to us, that we haven't had that yet on the Gmail, that would be cool. Yeah, we get lonely. Yeah, we get we get point fives and chat we chat us up. And when we get spam and that that's about it. So uh yeah, but that's our social media. Once again, as I always do, thank you to Tommy Musgrove for our amazing artwork. And we will see you on the next episode, which will be coming out on Thursday. Thank you for listening and enjoy. Enjoy. Thanks, guys. Love you.